Hey, what's up, Crypto Army? I'm Travis, your Crypto Newbie, bringing you my experiences. You have to learn things are hard. We just reminder, I'm not a financial advisor and none of my content should be viewed as financial advice. Today, we're going to talk about token approvals and how you can keep your wallet more secure by revoking them or at least reviewing them every once in a while to see what you've approved in the past. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to link to another YouTuber that did a video on his personal experience. It's a good watch. I highly recommend you check it out so you understand where these come from. I'm not going to go connect my wallet to a malicious website just so you can see what those token approvals look like. That's how you end up with problems like this. So I'm going to put his video because it's pretty good. It's a little long. It's about 20 minutes, but you can kind of speed it up and you kind of fast forward to the more important portions of his video to get a sense for how you can avoid these issues in the future. Now let's go ahead and jump right in. On the screen, you can see BSC scan. Now BSC scan is just one example. You can do this exact same thing on multiple networks that are out there. So this is just the BSC one. There's an Etherscan one. There's a Polygon one out there. There's a whole bunch of explorers that allow you to do exactly what I'm gonna show you today. So don't think that this is confined to just the BSC scan network. Make sure you look at other networks for other tokens that you have. So if you've got stuff on Ether, you wanna take a look at those as well. Now the specific tool that we're looking for is under the more button and it's token approvals. Now, most of us never ever look at this stuff. There's a lot of really good information on these scan tools that can help you out, whether it's the gas tracker or the token approval. So it's always good to kind of look around when you're going to these different websites to see what other stuff that they've got there that you could possibly use. But for today, let's just take a look at token approvals. And here's where you're gonna put your address. Now, I'm not gonna put my address to demonstrate this. We're going to use Reflex Finance since that was the AMA that I was monitoring when this topic came up. So we're going to use theirs as an example of an address to show you what we're talking about. So now, as you can see, we're on the Reflex Finance BSC scan and we're looking at the holders. Now, I've already gone through a lot of these. We're going to look at number 28 here. So we're going to copy this address and we're gonna go back over to token approvals. We're gonna paste it in and search it. Now you can see there's 31 different token approvals on this wallet. And just about every one of them is unlimited. Now each one of these means that the approved spender, in this case, PancakeSwap for most of these, has unlimited ability to do Evergrow coin or Jade or Dot, and this is selling. And it's also buying, but it's unlimited. They can do whatever they want. Trump token, hedge. So each one of these is unlimited access, which if it's not a malicious site, isn't a problem. But how do you know? How do you know it's not a malicious site? Now, to be honest with you, most of these transactions are cells. And there's no easy way to look at this. If you go through and actually look at the transactions, it'll point it out that if these are all selling transactions, pretty much every time you sell on PancakeSwap, you create one of these. So odds are, if you do a lot of sales, when you look at your address, you're going to see a whole bunch of these token approvals. To revoke them, all you do is click this button after you connect your Web3. So you have to go through and connect Web3, approve the transaction, and then you would go through and revoke each one of these in order to get rid of them if that's something you want to do. But again, unlimited means they can do whatever they want after you've granted them permissions. So if it's not something you have to worry about doing in the future, it doesn't hurt to revoke them. What you need to be aware of is that each time you revoke this, you're going to pay the gas fee associated with doing that revoke. So that's the downfall with doing these revokes. Now, if you have to do one of these transactions again in the future, and I'll use the example of Binance Pegged USD, every time you do transactions with Binance Pegged USD, you'll have to do this approval process again and then revoke it again. So that's the downfall with revoking these is you'll have to reapprove it for 12 or 13 cents, depending on what the gas fee is going to be for that day. And then you would revoke it again, paying yet again another fee. Now, unfortunately, there's no easy way to find out if there's any malicious approvals in here. And usually after you sign an approval for a malicious token, it doesn't usually take very long for them to clear out your account. So your indicator is basically going to be when your money's missing. <laughs> it really is usually that fast. Now, in some cases, it's not that quick. They'll let your balance accumulate, especially when it comes to Binance pegged USD approvals and then clear out your account once it hits a certain amount. So that's the risk of not doing anything is they could let it accumulate. And next thing you know, you're missing all of your money, which is also part of the reason why it's hard to track down 
where the culprit is, especially when you've got you know, dozens of approvals in the case of this individual. And a lot of them go back to 2021. So it's really hard to figure out which one of these potentially caused the problem, unfortunately. Now I'm looking at a second address for this example, and this one's only got 15 approvals. And I'm showing you this one for a specific reason. In this case, this wallet holder has staked USD Buffet using BrewLab staking. Now I reached out to BrewLab staking because the one concern I've got with revoking transactions is staking related transactions. When you physically remove your tokens from your wallet and stake them, my concern was is that if you revoke that transaction, you might have problems claiming your tokens in the future or unstaking or bringing them back into your wallet. Now, according to BrewLab staking, the point of contact I reached out to at that particular staking area, it's not an issue, but with the caveat that they can't necessarily speak for every single staking platform out there or yield farm, depending on which one you're looking at. In the case of staking, your best bet is to reach out to the team for that platform and ask the question, if I revoke this transaction, am I going to have trouble claiming or ending the staking or yield farming in the future? And that's just to cover you to make sure that you don't have any problems. I'm not going to give you a blanket disclaimer that says if you revoke every single one of these approvals, you won't have any problems. Now, I've revoked just about every single approval in my wallet, but I also reached out to the different platforms that I stake with and asked the question ahead of time. And in the cases of the ones I reached out to, the answer was no, it's not a problem. But that is definitely something you want to look into before you start randomly revoking transactions. Now, some of the transactions that I saw were some of the same transactions I've seen in some of these other ones here, whether it's the Binance Pegged USD. Again, every time you use Binance Pegged USD to buy something, there's usually going to be some sort of an enabling transaction that's going to be recorded in here. And that's what a lot of these are. And then every time that you sell, pretty much that's going to create. So if I was to bet, I would say that this Evergrow coin here is probably the sell of Evergrow coin. Now you can reach out to every single team to say, hey, I'm about to revoke this transaction. Is it going to cause any issues? Especially if you have the token in your wallet. Let's say, for example, you bought a token and then after you bought that token, you've got an approval. Normally it's when you're selling or trading a token for BSC or BUSD or ETH. Normally those are what are gonna generate these approvals. But if you bought one and you've got one, then you definitely wanna reach out to that token to say, is there an issue? Now I've revoked all the Binance pegged USD approvals inside of my wallet and I continue to get Binance pegged USD from the tokens I've purchased that give me BUSD. So there was no issue there either. But again, I can't give you a blanket. This is always going to work. You really need to reach out to the team. Now, my recommendation is anytime that you enable or you approve some sort of a transaction that you go back through your token approvals to look and see what was generated inside of the token approval area and revoke the ones that you don't want to keep around. So if you are prompted to enable a token in order to do a trade, more than likely it's going to generate a token approval that you can later revoke just to make sure you don't have any problems. Now there is something to be said that if you no longer have any APX in your wallet, that this revocation really doesn't matter because you no longer have that coin in your wallet. So them having unlimited doesn't really affect anything because the only thing that this unlimited allows for is the buying and selling of APX. So you could, in theory, just leave this revocation on there and not worry about it. On the other hand, if you have APX in your wallet, you might want to consider revoking this to ensure that you don't have any problems where one day you log in and all your APX is gone. Now, once you've got it all cleared out, it becomes much easier. If you log in and try this out and all of a sudden you've got three pages worth of transactions, you might have your work cut out for you. When I logged into my various wallets, most of my wallets, I had no transactions, but I've mentioned it multiple times on my videos. I don't do a lot of trading. I'm more of a hodler. I buy and I hold. <laughs> now, in the case of SafeMoon version one to version two, I did have a transaction for that as an approval, which I also revoked that after the process was done. So you might see that if you haven't already been in here to, to go through and clean this out. So let's go ahead and recap quick. Most buys don't generate token approvals. For most swaps, whenever you're trading between different tokens, excluding BSC, you're generally going to have to do a token approval. So if you're trying to change Binance pegged USD into Reflex or Evergrow or SafeMoon, you're probably going to have to do a token approval to do that transaction. For some reason, you don't have to do that to do Binance Smart Chain into whatever token you're trying to get, but it is for every other trade, pretty much a requirement to have it. 
Now, I can't say that's across the board. I want to say there's been a couple times where I've traded where I didn't have to do token approvals. By and large, whenever I do a swap, I have to do some sort of a token approval. Also, you'll have to do token approvals for most of your staking and yield farm usage, especially if it's removing it from your wallet. Now, I can't say that's the case for every single one because Reflex Finance, where it stays in your wallet, there wasn't a token approval required for that transaction. If you're trying to buy something on PancakeSwap or Uniswap, and it's asking you to do some sort of a token approval, you might wanna stop and just make sure you're on the right website. A lot of times that can be an indicator that you're on the wrong website. When something doesn't act the way that it normally does, that's the best time to stop, take a breath, make sure that you're actually doing what you need to be doing. Now, again, like I said though, if you're swapping between two tokens that one of them isn't Binance Smart Chain, there's a good chance you're going to have to enable that token in order to do that swap. Similarly, if you're connecting to a dApp, most dApps don't require any kind of an approval in order to connect, unless it needs to do something with your wallet. Now, for example, manually claiming your BUSD on a lot of these new tokens that have dApps that allow you to do that, that will often require some sort of an authorization to do that. But just viewing your wallet contents or the rewards, most of the dApps out there don't require you to hit an authorization to do that. So what are some approaches to keep you safe? The biggest and the most important is don't connect your wallet to anything that you don't trust or anything new that you <laughs> that you don't trust. In those cases where you're trying to get a new token or, or try some new website, it's often a better idea to get a new wallet because they're free, they don't cost anything, and then use that new wallet to do that transaction. You would definitely not wanna connect a wallet that's got hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to a piece of software that you haven't used before. That's not a good approach to keeping your wallet secure. <laughs> so create a new wallet, put a little bit of BSC in there or Ethereum or whatever network you're talking about, and use that as the first try with that website especially if it's a brand new launching token or project, those are really high risk because they're not tested. Next, you wanna go in and actually revoke the approvals that you no longer need, just to kind of clean it up. As I said, if you no longer have that token, there's a good argument that you don't necessarily need to revoke it and spend the money to do that. It's on you on whether you wanna do that or not. It's generally not a high risk, as long as it doesn't just say unlimited and doesn't say what token it's unlimited for. If it just says unlimited and there's no reflex or anything else there, that is unlimited. It can literally do anything inside of your wallet. So you gotta be very careful on what you're allowing to stay in here for your revocations. Similarly, if it's a staking situation or a yield farm, you might wanna reach out just to make sure that you revoking it's not gonna cause problems. And finally, if you enable or approve something, you might wanna go through and check your token approvals and revoke it if it's not gonna be something you use in the future or it's something that you don't use on a regular basis. So what does this usually look like? Now, if you're the subject of one of these malicious attacks and you've got a token approval, normally what happens is you're gonna come back, check your wallet, and all of a specific token is removed. Maybe it's safe moon, maybe it's reflex. It could be any number of different tokens depending on what you approved. And you might not even realize you did the approval. Sometimes it can throw two or three different approvals at you from a malicious website and you approve it because you just assume you have to do that in order to use that new website and you approve everything. And you might have given away access to your entire wallet. You might have given away access to a specific token any number of things can happen with those approvals. So you gotta be very careful about what you're signing and agreeing to. And you can actually look at them in the approval process. So always look and see exactly what you're doing. And if it's something you've used before, is it the same thing that you've had to do in the past? Some of the examples are people that come check their Binance Peg USD and it's all gone, or a specific token is gone, or their entire wallet's gone and it's incredibly difficult to troubleshoot it after the fact, just because there's so many token approvals and they have to remember what they were doing on those days and which websites they were visiting when they agreed to these approvals. But if this has happened to you, these dates can help you narrow down what the most likely culprit is. But you have to remember on that date, what were you doing? Now, sometimes you can go back through your history and determine exactly what it was. But at that point, you've already lost the money and it's very unlikely that you're gonna get it back. That's pretty much it for today. Hope you found the content helpful. Let me know in the comments, were you completely oblivious to token approvals or were you aware of this? Do you have a different step or different process than what I described in this video?
Now, there are other tools out there that you can use to revoke your token approvals, but the explorers have them built in. They don't cost anything, and they're pretty easy to use. So I usually recommend just using the explorers, but there are some paid options out there as well. Until next time, stay strong with those diamond hands.